On Instagram the other day, I saw this meme that said the goal is to build a life that you don't need a vacation from. And then in the background, it was this beautiful homestead. Right away, I was just, I felt some guilt because I am really looking forward to a vacation. But the more I thought about it, the more I recognized that anything that you do every single day for any amount of time, something that's your job, your livelihood, you are going to need a break from it. And if you truly love what you're doing and want it to be sustainable for the long haul, you don't want to burn out, you're going to have to take a break from it. This video is sponsored by Thrive Market. So if homesteaders should take a break, how in the world do you make it happen with all there is to take care of all the animals and everything? How do you make so that you can leave, especially for longer than just a couple days? We are going on vacation next week. We're all so crazy excited about it. But as you all know, if you are homesteaders, there's a lot that you have to get done behind the scenes before you can actually just have a break and truly relax. So Cody is gonna take you guys outside and show you a bunch of the stuff that he does outside for the chores to get ready to go on vacation. And I'm gonna take you along with me and show you some of the things that I'm gonna be doing to get things in the house ready for a vacation. Our vacation is kind of right over the time where I should be starting some of my seedlings. And so what I decided to do is go through and pick out herbs and flowers and onions and some things like that that take longer to germinate and I'll plant them like the day before we leave so that they can germinate the week that we're gone. I'm looking in the Berlin Seed catalog, they have this really cool feature where for the herbs and the flowers, they tell you how long the seeds take to germinate. Some of these take like over a week and they don't need to be under a grow light while they're germinating. So the things that I'm going to plant before I leave are calendula and oregano, onions and chamomile. These four things take quite a bit of time to germinate, like seven to 10 days. So I just, we have these plastic containers left over from like years ago when we did farmer's market. We pick strawberries into these. I'm gonna fill them with soil and you can see they have lots of drainage holes. So I think these will be perfect for starting my seeds. I really like to, when it comes to flowers and herbs, instead of planting the seeds directly into like, um, what do you call them? seed cells, I like to just sow them into a container and then transplant the tiny seedlings. I find I have much more success that way. I'm not actually gonna plant these yet today. I'm just going to rehydrate the soil. We have potting soil that is down in our root cellar and it's like dusty, dusty dry. So I'm going to rehydrate that, fill the containers, get everything ready. And then the day before we leave, I'll just quickly sew these onto the top, water them well, and then I'll close the lid and put saran wrap over them, which will help the moisture stay in here and they'll be just fine for a week while we're gone. You can see how much moisture this potting soil holds. It is crazy. Just like turning the faucet on into this stuff. In the homesteading community, I feel like there's this sense of pride that people take in working hard and not taking breaks. And while I really genuinely value hard work and teaching our children how to work hard, I also really value downtime and rest. I think rest is just really undervalued in the homesteading community. And I mean, honestly, me and Cody have figured this out the hard way. We've had health issues that have come from just having stress all the time. I personally believe that if you love something enough, you will take breaks from it to make so that what you love can be sustainable and that you don't just stop from burnout. I also believe that taking vacations is important for our children. I don't want them to think back to their childhood and only remember all the hard work because whether we like it or not, kids can become bitter about working too hard all the time. I actually have friends who have decided that they don't want to do what their parents did when they were growing up, like as, as far as an occupation, because they were like, you know, we just had to work too hard and it just doesn't look enticing to them anymore. It's not either that we really think that our children should be homesteaders when they grow up. We've actually told them that they can be whatever they wanna be. This is just the lifestyle we have chosen. Hey, Maddie. I think one of the biggest things to make so that you can go on a vacation is to have everything secure. If you have to worry about your animals getting out or predators getting in while you're gone, it's gonna really dampen your vacation. So if while you're at home, you have to worry about it, you're gonna definitely worry about it while you're gone and it's just gonna add extra stress. It's also gonna make it more difficult for somebody to do your chores. It's no fun to have to try to round up somebody else's cows. I've been there, done that, no fun. I'm gonna check this fence right here and see how well it's shocking. 
It's just a neat little gadget. Ground it and hook it on. I doubt you'll be able to see the lights on the camera. It's kind of dim, but there's definitely lights flashing all the way up at the top. Obviously freak things can happen, but I do have confidence in my fences and in our chicken coop because it wasn't just thrown together. I make sure that my fences stay up, that they're kept tight, there's not a lot of weeds on them. <laughs> I want my fences to be shocking hard even while I'm here at home because I don't want to worry about them getting out, getting on the road, things like that. And then that way, when we do want to leave to go on vacation, I don't have to worry about it then either. I definitely built this chicken coop with keeping predators out in mind. Down the sides, there's wood. Where the roll up is, there's chicken wire going way up. And we also make so that the chores are kept really simple in here. It's just food and water and they can be given extra to last them a couple days to make it really easy for somebody else to do them. We wanna say thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Maybe like us, you don't live very close to a health food store. Maybe you're following a specific diet or maybe you just wanna save money on healthy groceries. You definitely need to look up Thrive Market. It's an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone with guaranteed savings on every order. And in fact, if you find a lower price somewhere else, they'll match it. We've been getting our collagen from Thrive because it's cheaper than where we were getting it before. Michelle has also been getting her organic whole wheat bread flour from Thrive because it's really hard to find good quality organic stuff locally. And if we do find it, it's really expensive. There's also a couple other special little things that I got in here. I got a little surprise for Michelle. This is her favorite chocolate. And also something for us sun deprived, super white Ohioans going on vacation. Uh, this is some organic sunscreen. We are not big sunscreen people at all. We believe the sun is healthy for you and we don't usually use it, but being that it's winter in Ohio and we're just like not getting any sun at all, we're a little afraid that we're just gonna totally fry while we're on vacation. So we got this too. The cool thing about looking for products like that or anything to fit a certain kind of diet you're on is you can filter products by things like gluten-free, vegan, keto, and a whole lot more. Go check them out. And if you join using our link, you'll get 30% off your first order plus a free gift worth up to $60. So go to thrivemarket.com slash more than farmers. And the link is in the description box below. Maybe you just want to save money on healthy groceries. I got a little tongue tied there. Growing up, my dad was a farmer and whenever we would go on vacation, he would pay his chore boys very well. And it's much easier for me to go on a vacation and know that I'm not taking advantage of someone, that somebody's not like sweating out there doing their chores for me without being reimbursed for it. We also let them keep the food that's coming in. So the eggs and the milk and if there's, if it's like in the summertime garden produce, they can keep what they want. Before a chore boy takes over, I like to have the fridge cleaned out. I like to have all the excess stuff used up. I have a whole bunch of eggs. I mean, I guess not a whole bunch, but a decent amount of eggs here that I would like to get used up. I could just obviously leave them sitting on the counter, but some of them are kind of old and I just want to get them used up before we leave. And as you can see here, I have quite a bit of milk that needs to be used up before we leave. I'm going to skim most of this and then I'll probably make some ricotta cheese. Ricotta cheese is something that you can freeze and butter is something that you can freeze. I'm going to keep a couple of these out for fresh milk for us, a couple for our herd share members and the rest I'm going to process. One of the main reasons that we finally got a milker was to make it easier for somebody to do the chores for us if we ever wanted to go away. A couple summers ago, we needed to leave for a few days for a family reunion, and I was feeling bad for the person that had to do our chores. He did know how to hand milk, and I appreciated that, but I also wanted to make it easier for him because hand milking is hard work, and especially if you're not used to doing it all the time. So we did get a milker and it has made it a lot easier. It's way easier to find somebody to run a milking machine than to get somebody to hand milk. There is very select few people that will hand milk for you. And yes, we did go back in time a little bit to the morning of the rest of this video because I wanna talk about this while I'm actually milking the cow. I've said this before, but we do consider our cow grass fed. She just gets hay in the winter mostly and then grass in the summer but she does get some grain at milking time. It just helps her hold still. And also the way that cows are have been bred to produce so much milk, the modern dairy cow, sometimes they do just need some grain to keep their body in good condition, unless you have a cow specifically bred with like grass fed genetics. I'm a little late this morning, so she's ready to get in here. Hey Maddie. 
I think one of the worst parts about winter, especially winter here when it gets really cold, but then it warms up, everything thaws out and gets all muddy and nasty. And she's just in the corral most of the time is cleaning the udder. It gets so nasty. In the summer, it just stays nice and clean. Maddie, knock it off. Because of how dirty her udder gets and how long it takes me to clean it sometimes, she often gets done with her grain about by the time I'm done cleaning it, so, and I don't want to give her more grain, so I've been giving her some alfalfa pellets too. And I've also got some alfalfa hay down there, and usually when she's eating her grain and then eating those alfalfa pellets, she'll kind of munch on that and she's usually okay. Hey, Holly. Good morning, girl. Good morning. She's doing a lot better. She's still a little skittish. I can't just walk up to her and pet her when she's out in the pasture or whatever, but she holds pretty still every morning now. I'm doing a little experiment right now to take a little bit of a load off of us and to make it easier for somebody to do our chores. In the past, we've always done once a day milking. I'll separate the calf at night, and then in the morning, I get all the milk from the cow, and that works really well. If you wanna get a cow and you don't want it to milk twice a day, totally works. Something that I'm trying right now is actually just milking every other day. So the calf is big enough that she'll pretty much just, she'll drink a lot of milk. And so the days that I don't wanna milk, I just leave the calf with the cow all day long and the calf will pretty much take care of the cow. And then the evening before I wanna milk the cow, I'll separate the calf like I had been doing and then I get all the milk in the morning. I have noticed a little decrease in milk production, but it's really not that much. And it's just made it a lot less overwhelming. We were getting 35 gallons a week. It's a ton of milk and we do have a herd share program, but that wasn't taking care of all of it. We weren't able to use all of it. And we really didn't wanna take on more people in our herd share program right now. It can just be, even if you can take care of it all, it can be really overwhelming. It's made it a lot more flexible for us and I really like that. And I also really like that it's gonna make it a whole lot easier for somebody to do chores for us while we're gone. Milking is the hardest of the chores on our homestead. It's the hardest thing to get somebody to come do. I mean, the chickens, you can give them extra food and water and they'll be okay for a few days. They just need somebody to check on them. The dog is really easy to take care of. Even the cows, hay and water, if you're just raising beef, that's really easy to do with a round bale and just filling up their water every day or every other day. Milking a cow is a whole lot more intense. So the more that we can do to make it more efficient, simpler, easier, the better it'll be for us and for other people that we want to get to come do our chores. I believe that how much a homestead ties you down is a lot what you make of it. Obviously to a certain extent, a homestead does just tie you down. This is a life that we chose for ourselves and we don't want to push that life on anybody else. We don't want to make them responsible for our things. But if there's people who are willing to do it, who are willing to be paid to do it, and are willing to help us out. You know, we wanna take a vacation every now and then, but I feel like we can make it simpler and easier to do those things and make it so that it's some, something that somebody might enjoy doing instead of just really dreading doing something like that for us. Oh, tail. We still grow a lot of our own food. We just don't do as much of the different things. We don't have cows and sheep and goats and rabbits. Hey, get back out of here. <laughs> but we raise our own beef and our own chicken. And so we do have all of our own meat. We do have a cow, so we do have our own milk. We raise vegetables in the garden. And so we have all of our own vegetables. So we still are raising a lot of our own food, but we choose to keep it as simple as possible to make so that this whole thing isn't just a dictator over us so that we still have freedom to be more than farmers because if we want to go camping for a weekend, if we want to go to the skate park during the day, if we want to go on a hike or whatever, we want to give our children this lifestyle, this homestead lifestyle where they're learning responsibility. They're learning to appreciate the simple things in life and all that. But we also want to give them opportunities to do other things. And so that's why we have to figure out how to make things super efficient and super simple. While this milk is heating for the ricotta cheese, I am going to make the eggs into a really simple egg bake. I'm just going to whisk some eggs with cream and then put hamburger and cheese on top and bake it in a cookie sheet. That's a really easy breakfast. I can just cut it into squares and the kids can put it into the toaster oven themselves. When I'm sorting through milk and processing a counter full of milk like this, I like to use the oldest milk in things like cheese because it gets cooked. Things like butter that you wanna eat raw aren't going to last as long. So if I make butter from cream that's already a week old, 
the butter is not going to have as long of a shelf life. I really like this book, Cheese Making by Ricky Carroll. This is what I use for making my ricotta. The only ingredients are whole milk, citric acid, and salt. For this recipe, I have been adding an extra scoop of citric acid. I just feel like the curd separates better. I will say that like, no matter how hard you try to have everything caught up before you leave for vacation, it's just kind of the nature of homesteading. Like when you get home, you're gonna have a lot of things to catch up on. I mean, you're not eating all the food that's coming in every day. And most often the chore boys can't take all the food home. Like they don't have need for all of that food. And so there's always things to catch up on when we get home, but I just try to enjoy the moment on vacation and face the work when I come back home. can definitely tell that this is winter butter. Winter butter tends to be drier, more crumbly, and then definitely not as yellow because the cows aren't eating that fresh, juicy green grass. This trick here that I do with the flour sack towel really helps to save a ton of time with kneading butter. You can get tons of the buttermilk out before you even start the kneading process. I like to use my hands to knead the butter because I feel like you can be so much more thorough in getting the buttermilk out than if you just use a paddle in a bowl. And I'm really picky with getting the buttermilk out because my butter will last so much longer. And we don't love the taste of, what do you call it, fermented butter? Or ripe butter. just ripe butter. We don't love that taste. We like it to be nice and sweet. This is the amount of butter that I got off of three gallons of milk. This doesn't look like much and it's not, but our calf is on the cow right now. So she is just not giving as much cream. She's holding her cream back for her calf instead of letting us have it, which is fine. We have a very healthy calf. Always wash your hands with hot water first and then with cold water and leave your hands wet after the cold water and the butter will not stick to your hands. It's literally like magic. You do not have to salt your butter if you don't want to. Especially on Instagram, I have lots of people telling me how horrible it is that I'm putting salt on our butter. We love salt on our butter. And this may look like a lot of salt, but this is also a very large chunk of butter. It takes a lot of salt to make something this fatty, I guess you could say, salty. I like to let the water from the tap get super, super cold before I start kneading under the tap water. I prefer this method over putting the butter into ice water. My hands just completely froze off when I was trying to do it in ice water, and it just simply isn't necessary. When I started washing my butter and kneading it under the water until the water runs clear, it completely transformed how long my butter lasted. And no, there is not pepper in this salt. <laughs> this is Redmond real salt. No pepper, I promise. This whole egg bake thing is just going to be very, very simple. I'm gonna crack all these eggs into the blender with some cream and salt and pepper, and I'll just pour it in a cookie sheet and sprinkle ground beef and shredded cheese on top and bake it. That way it can also go in the freezer if we don't get it all eaten, and it'll just be a really easy way to get the eggs used up. My kids are getting very, very tired of fried eggs, and so I'm trying to mix it up a little bit here. This cheese is getting there. Eggs are always better with a whole bunch of butter, so I'm gonna put butter in these pans first. I decided against a cookie sheet because this will be easier to put in and out of the oven when the eggs are runny, so. I personally think that one of the secrets to making an egg bake that's actually good is not making the eggs too thick. Make sure there's like lots of stuff to go with the eggs. Just my opinion. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of cheese on here. The more cheese, the better my kids will eat it. Into the oven it goes. This will not take very long and you really don't wanna over bake an egg bake because they'll set a little bit yet after you get them out of the oven. Our egg bake is done. 
You want it just the tiniest little bit jiggly in the middle. I'm just gonna let these cool and then I'll cut them into squares and we'll probably eat some of them and put the rest in the freezer. This cheese is ready to hang now. Just gently, gently scraping it off the bottom. I'm gonna strain this out and definitely remember that this whey is going to be very acidic. So be careful about putting it on your garden and things like that because too much of this will kill your plants and make your soil very acidic. I'm gonna let this cheese hang for about 15 minutes. You don't wanna hang it more than that or I feel like it gets too dry and yes she already knows she shouldn't be hanging <laughs> on the faucet it works and my faucet so far hasn't minded this cheese turned out perfectly I'm going to add some salt basil and onion salt and some things like that to this. My kids have really been enjoying this, just eating it straight out of the container. I like to add just a tiny bit of cream because that really helps the cheese to stay soft. Michelle has one more thing she needs to get done before we leave, but real quick, first I wanna check something very important. Got this jug hiding back there in the dark and I just wanna look and see, there's some tiny little bubbles coming up. We watch this for a little bit, bubble will go through eventually. Not super fast, but it is active. There's a lot of settling down here. I'm going to do what they said to do in the video and just give this some swirls. What I'm going to do next is what I call the swirl method. It's been going for a couple weeks now. Still won't be ready by the time we get back, I don't think, but uh, it's going to start getting close. I am super excited about this. Something else I wanted to say real quick. You remember how it was when you first started this homestead life, especially like when you first got a cow, like how intimidating that was to learn all that stuff. And that's what I like to think about, about the person that I'm getting to do my chores. So some of the people that do my chores for me do have experience with some of that stuff, but they're not doing it every day like I am. They're not used to doing it all the time. And I think it can look really intimidating for somebody to take care of somebody else's homestead for a couple days or a week or whatever. And so that's why we try to make things so simple so that pretty much anybody can do it. With the cow, it's a little bit different with milking. It does take somebody a little extra special for that. But for the other stuff, I mean, honestly, we could get pretty much about anybody with even a little bit of responsibility to do that stuff for us and we could feel okay with it. To make sure that everything is streamlined in the house, I like to check and make sure that the cupboard above the milk sink is fully stocked with jugs. There's nothing more annoying than having a few gallons of milk to strain and no containers to put it in. I also check and make sure that there's enough milk filters for the strainer to last for the amount of time that we will be gone. We do also have to be choosy about when we go on vacation. If our cow's about to have a calf, we're not gonna go anywhere. A couple years ago, there was a funeral we needed to go to about five hours away. We all went for part of it. Our cow was about to have a calf and I didn't feel like I could stay away very long. So I came back home the same day. Michelle stayed and came back with her parents then later and worked out okay. And that's something that even if somebody is coming to do our chores for us, we don't want to put something like that big and heavy on them to take care of. Simplicity and efficiency are really important to us and I feel like this was way too short of a time to actually talk about a lot of the things we do here in our homestead. So I put together a playlist of other videos where we talk about that and it's right here. Also, make sure you head over to thrivemarket.com slash more than farmers so you can get 30% off and your free gift. Hey Maddie. Weenie. <laughs> Maybe like us, you don't live near a health food store and I kind of got stumbled again. 